Hey friends, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to share with you how do you mock API via a proxy. So as front-end developers, this is one of the challenges that we usually have. So let's assume that uh, our PM or the product owner has a new feature and that involves work from the backend to serve new data to the, uh, the front-end. So most of the time, a lot of uh, inexperienced uh, maybe junior front-end developers will think that that is a blocker. They expect that the back-end has to be ready in order for the front-end to implement the new data. But that is far from the truth. There are several ways that uh, you can actually work concurrently with the back-end. And the first way is, <clears throat> again, for the back-end to define something called an API contract. So an API contract is basically a, a document which, which, uh, which includes the format of how the JSON payload should look like. It should contain uh, what fields uh, is to be expected and what are the data types. All right, so once that uh, API contract has been finalized uh, and you receive it as a front-end developer, you're able to start working concurrently, all right? So one thing you can do is to first define maybe the Swift models inside your existing models. Uh, let's assume you're adding a new um, a, a new node or a new object. That's how you can uh, you can also just add those models inside. But today I want to show you how you can actually mock the JSON payload that's actually being returned from the server without uh, backend uh, uh, you know deploying those changes onto maybe the staging endpoint. All right. So <clears throat> let me give an example. So let's assume that um, over here I I I'm hitting this endpoint right now. This is a fake API. And it returns me an object over here, so I'm going to keep this extremely simple. So we have the ID, the name, as well as the occupation that states uh, iOS developer. So we have integer, string, and string over here. All right. So let me just bring you to also Visual Studio Code. All right. So let's 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 assume that the current uh, API returns this format: ID, name, and occupation. And now, uh, product manager or product owner decides to have a new feature, which uh, which will include a new object called the hobby, all right, H O B B Y, and uh, backend has defined that a hobby uh, object will look like this. So it has an ID as well as a title. Okay, so ID is integer, title is string, and this string can contain maybe soccer, for example. It's a string, right? And now the new API contract should look something like that. So we have the uh, existing uh, ID, name, and occupation, and now we have an array. Of hobbies so you can see over here we have hobbies as the new field and we see those square brackets so we know there's an array and within those array we have these objects over here all right so this is basically this thing over here all right so I'm going to show you how we can uh, use proxy man to actually mock this data to be returned from the back end okay so I have a very simple project over here so let me just quickly show you the storyboard Hi, so the storyboard finally loaded. So as you can see, this is a very simple design. I don't really, I don't even know if design is the right word over here. So we have two labels over here. We have a name label as well as a hobby label. Currently, I have uh, added, uh, I've hard coded the text to be name placeholder as well as hobby placeholder, so that we can differentiate uh, those labels when we update the label in our code. All right. So uh, this is inside a stack view and it's just centralized uh, vertically and horizontally. All right. So let's look at our view controller right now and let's see what we have inside okay so this is 50 lines long really short okay so over here we have two IB outlets name label and hobbies label inside our view did load we call a function called fetch users and what it does is that it makes an API request to this endpoint so as you can see over here we have a URL request which we are constructing over here and the endpoint that we're using is this one which um, as you saw earlier in the previous uh, video, oh, sorry, in the previous clip, this is what the payload looks like currently. So let's come back over here. We create the URL as well as the request inside this block. Okay, so I'm trying to keep things really simple over here. And then over here, we create the URL session. So as you can see over here, uh, I have a bunch of uh, configurations and the purpose is to uh, actually uh, ignore the cache. Okay, so nothing too crazy. Typically, you would use something like URL session .shared. Finally, over here, we make the API call. So we pass in the request and then uh, we get the data. Where's the data? We get the data and we try to decode it using JSON decoder. Over here, I uh, do a bang over here because I do expect that um, the payload will conform to the model. So if it fails, it's just going to crash on me and that's totally fine. Okay, so once we get the, J uh, the user model, I'm going to pass that model into this function called update UI. And what it does over here is that 
it just updates the name label okay so i will expect to see uh, kelvin okay so let me just quickly run this and let's see uh, what we see okay finally uh, over here i forgot to mention that we have a user strut over here which conforms to the decodable protocol so that should be easy to understand okay so i'm going to run the simulator now and let's see uh, if we are getting the name inside the label All right, so the simulator finally loaded and you can see that uh, the name Kelvin is printed onto the name label. And for the hobbies, uh, label is not being updated. That's why we see the word placeholder over here. All right, so now what I want to do is to show you how we can use Proxyman to mock this data, okay? So I'm going to open up Proxyman. Let me find where that is. Uh, over here, okay, Proxyman. Okay, so this is something that you can download uh, over the internet for free. There is a paid version, but the free version is more than enough to uh, solve most of our problems okay so over here if you notice uh, once you install proxyman you do have to install the certificates on your mac as well as on the simulator which i've already done so already so these are really simple stuff which you can read online how to do this okay so i'm going to skip uh, through that and right now i'm going to just open up uh, this apps section over here and let me just rerun the simulator one more time and pop over to proxyman and you should notice that we should see our app showing up over here, all right? So you see API test here, and the reason is because my project name is called API test, all right? So let's go back to Proxyman, and notice that when I select on API test, I see an entry over here, all right? And this entry shows me what is the uh, API call that's being made by this application over here, which happens to be the mock, mocky.io. And if you notice over here at the bottom, <clears throat> There is the response body which indicates the uh, the API uh, payload. Okay, so previous okay, so this should not appear. I think it, it's appearing because I mocked this previously when I was trying to record this. So you know what? Let me just kill this one more time and let me redo this one more time. Okay, so hit the clear button and let me just uh, run the simulator one more time and let's pop over to proxy man and we should see this. Uh, payload being shown okay so again on oops not this card <laughs> again on simulator you see kelvin and this hobbies placeholder okay so now that uh, i have this uh, entry i'm able to mock this and when i mean mock it means i can insert fake data into this response so what i'm going to do is to come back over to visual studio code and get the new contract over here and i'm going to just copy the entire thing okay which includes this hobbies uh, object inside here let's come back to proxy man and what you want to do is to right click over here go to tools and then do map local okay so once you tap on this notice that we have this map local editor that pops up and currently this shows what is the response that's being received earlier okay so what we can do is we can okay maybe i show you the first thing first okay so i can just change this over here and maybe let's call this uh, susan okay and let me just close this and let me just rerun the simulator one more time and let's see what happens inside uh, the label okay so you see now it's returning Susan and that's because uh, I modified the I modified this uh, this I use this editor to mock the, the data over here all right so what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm going to just paste the entire new API contract over here which uh, includes the hobbies view okay so what I'm gonna do now is to close this and then uh, let's come back to the simulator and just rerun this. I believe I should see Kelvin uh, once more. And then we're going to work towards uh, putting in the hobbies inside this placeholder. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is because I know how the API contract looks like, let me just open this again. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Let me just copy this so I have a reference. Okay, so let's create a struct to represent a hobby. So hobby and then this also should conform to decodable okay so what do we have we have an id which is of type in and we have the title which is of type string all right so what i can do right now is that i can say um, let hobby hobbies equals to an array of hobby okay i can make this a optional uh, because uh, i know that um, okay i can make this an optional or non-optional let's let's just do a non-optional first because i know that but the back end is definitely sorry the mock uh, response is definitely going to contain hobby all right so over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to just print out um, user dot hobbies okay maybe let's do hobbies dot first okay so let's run the simulator right now and let's see if we are getting the first hobby which i think is soccer all right so let's uh, have a look 
Alright, so as you can see over here, it printed out soccer over here. So what I can do right now is I can do uh, maybe hobbies. Hobby uh, user dot hobbies uh, dot for each. Oh, or maybe let's let's do map. And then uh, let's do title. And then rated. Oh, joint. Joint with just a comma over here. And then let hobbies like that. And then I can do uh, hobbies label dot text equals to hobbies. All right, so let's run the simulator and let's see if we are getting the soccer encoding inside. All right, so as you can see, we have soccer encoding inside our fields now. So actually, that's, this is not really the point of the lesson, but to tell you that actually you can use uh, proxy man uh, just uh, right clicking, uh, going to the map local, and being able to modify. The payload. In the same way, you can also uh, modify uh, the response as well. So as you can see over here, this is a 200. So sometimes if you want to test, you know, you want to test for error, for example, you want to simulate what happens if a uh, backend returns a 400 or 500, you can actually just modify this to put in 4 as well. Yep, so alright guys, this concludes the end of the lesson. I hope that you learned something useful from it. And if you want to check out, the app is called Proxyman. You can Google about it and read more about it. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.